Greetings and welcome to another impressions video here at Words About Games and today we're going to be looking at Wolfenstein Youngblood. Wolfenstein Youngblood is the newest entry in Machine Games' rebooted Wolfenstein series with it sitting somewhere between a sequel and an expansion for New Colossus. After a significant time skip you'll take on the roles of Soph and Jess as they travel to Nazi occupied France in the 1980s in search of their father BJ Blaskovich who has disappeared looking for a mysterious lab. I was planning to sink a lot more time into Youngblood before I made this video. Heck, as someone who loved the previous two games in the series, I'd been planning on finishing the game entirely. But as I mentioned on the podcast yesterday, I've more or less rage quit the game and I don't plan on going back to it. There's one specific reason I've ditched Youngblood, but to get to it I need to give you context, which means telling you about all the annoyances and frustrations I've been having while playing. First, let me start by saying Youngblood does get a few things right. The first two things are its protagonists. Soph and Jess are excellent main characters. By the end of the opening level, I was already in love with these dorky weirdos. Unlike their father, they're not professional Nazi killers. In fact, you get to see them kill their first Nazi in a wonderful cutscene. I love their interactions with each other and their quirks and personalities, and I cannot say enough good things about their inclusion here. I hope we get to see a lot more of them in the next fully-fledged Wolfenstein game. Youngblood also nails its core shooting mechanics, which are kind of transposed directly from New Colossus and New Order. Ripping through Nazis with Wolfenstein's signature loadout of weapons is a blast thanks to the series' traditionally tight gunplay, especially when married to the excellently designed levels, which introduce verticality in a way that really enhances the Wolfenstein experience. At least it is when you're not facing Youngblood's new bullet sponge enemies. One of my issues with Youngblood is that even the things it gets right it also gets wrong. While the core shooting is enjoyable, there are a ton of armoured enemies who take an absurd amount of bullets to take down. You need to chip away at a secondary health bar with the correct weapon type before you can start damaging their health, which grinds the usual quick pace of Wolfenstein to a crawl and makes what was a really satisfying shooter in past entries feel almost slow and kind of annoying. Similarly, while the protagonists are wonderful, they've done a major disservice by Machine Games all but jettisoning storytelling in Youngblood. One of the reasons I adore the modern day Wolfenstein games is thanks to the surprisingly compelling narrative and cast of characters Machine Games blended to the frantic Nazi killing action. Those games had brilliant characters and really strong stories. Youngblood starts out strong with some excellent cutscenes and for the first hour or so I was having a blast. But once you reach Paris, the game ditches most of its storytelling in favour of having you grind levels by completing side quests, and any sense of an overarching narrative is kind of put on the back burner. It's a bit of a mess, basically. Once you're in Paris, you're tasked with assaulting three towers and killing the Nazi commanders in control of them. The goal being to uncover the location of Lab X, where BJ was apparently heading. But thanks to the new RPG mechanics in the game, you can't just attack each tower. Instead, you need to complete tasks for the members of the Paris Resistance to gain levels, upgrade your abilities, and find alternate entrances to avoid a suicidal head-on assault. I can see what Machine Games were going for, but none of this is really well executed. Instead of a strong linear narrative, Youngblood feels like it had its runtime padded out. Side quests rarely feel like they matter in the grand scheme of things, and the small hub worlds are always spawning new Nazis no matter how many times you roll through them. You just end up zipping from quest marker to quest marker, completing menial tasks, killing some Nazis along the way, and then repeating the whole thing over and over. It quickly becomes dull, especially when combined with the lackluster new RPG mechanics that have been unlocked. As mentioned earlier, enemies are bullet sponges. You can level up and spend ability points to upgrade your character, increasing health, letting you carry heavy weapons, unlocking new special moves, and so on. You can also collect and spend silver coins to upgrade your loadout, boosting a variety of stats to increase the DPS, fire rate and more on each of your weapons. But the Nazis scale and power alongside you, so it never really feels like the RPG mechanics make a bit of difference. Again, it just feels like it's there to pad the runtime and stop you going straight for the Brother Towers. It was assaulting a Brother Tower that caused me to quit the game altogether. Despite all of the problems, the core gunplay was keeping me invested. I found a secret entrance to Brother 2 while doing a side quest and, having just hit the recommended level, decided to give it a go, spending around 30 minutes making my way to the top of the tower. At the end of the massive, sprawling level, I hit a boss fight and unfortunately trapped myself in a corner. 
Upon dying, I found the checkpoint was right back at the start of the hall level, meaning I was looking at another half hour climb just to attempt it again, without the ability to level up to give myself a better chance of survival. Wolfenstein Youngblood isn't an outright terrible game, but it's not one I can really recommend either, not even to diehard fans of the series, and I should know I'm one of them. The two new protagonists are brilliant, but Youngblood ditches the strong storytelling they deserve, instead deciding to pad its runtime with level grinding and endless side quests. The core gunplay is still as satisfying as ever, but it's been buried under layers of RPG mechanics that do a lot to stifle that satisfaction, making this entry in the series feel like a frustration. Taking everything into consideration, it honestly feels like Youngblood was designed more to waste my time than it was designed to be an enjoyable experience. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, please leave us a comment, like, or subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We've got tons of awesome videos coming every week, including review impressions, indie game of the week, debate-driven top five lists, video essays, and our weekly podcast where we discuss games, gaming culture, and the games industry. We also stream three times a week at twitch.tv slash wordsaboutgames. But most importantly, have a fantastic day.